So I'm redoing a video that I did a little while ago that had some audio problems. And what we're going to be going over is how to set up a GraphQL server that connects to a Mongo database. So to do this, we're going to be starting from scratch and we're going to be using three tools to help us out. The first one is Babel. This is going to allow us to use some different JavaScript syntax. Secondly, we're going to be using Apollo. This is going to be the server component that's going to handle GraphQL requests. And thirdly, we're going to be using Mongoose to connect to MongoDB and create objects and store stuff in the database. So let's go ahead and get started with this. So I have VS Code up and open over here, and I have an empty folder open. So the first thing that I'm going to do is say npm init-y. So this should create a package.json file. I can open that up, it should look like this. And now we're ready to get, get started and s install some dependencies. So the first thing we're going to do is get Babel set up. So I noticed when I went to the setup of Babel, and I was going to do the node daemon one, that there was generally the right steps, but they have some outdated dependencies. So we're going to kind of follow these steps, but do it uh, in a better way. So first off, uh, they are installing Babel CLI and Babel preset env, um, which are right, but these are old dependencies. So we are going to use the one that it suggests down here, Babel preset env, that looks like this. So we're going to start by saying yarn add as a dev dependency at babel slash preset dash env. We're going to say at babel slash cli at babel slash node. And I think that's all the babel things. Oh, actually, I think we also need at babel core. And then lastly, we're going to be using this utility called no daemon, which we're going to look at what that does in just a second. Uh, so after that, we're going to basically just add this script. Um, I'm going to copy this. I actually don't know why I copied this, to be honest. We're going to rename it to start, and we're also just going to clean this out here. So maybe that was a bad thing. We're going to copy this one. This is kind of closer to what we need. So we're going to run this thing called no daemon. We're going to say dash dash exec. This is basically just telling no daemon what to run. In this case, babel node, and then we're going to point to a file. In our case, source slash index.js. All right, so let's create that source slash index.js. And here we have an empty file, and I'm going to add console.log hi, just to make sure everything works. We can say yarn start to see if it indeed was set up correctly. Now we say hi. Now let's talk about what this node daemon does. So what it's going to do is it's going to watch our files, and then when we make a change to them, automatically reload them slash rerun them. So if I say hello and then save, you're going to notice it's going to reload it, restart, and it's going to say hello. So this allows us to have a nice development environment where we can just code and not have to worry about coming to command line and stopping and restarting it. It's just going to keep running. All right, so let's set up the next thing. So I think the last thing with Babel is just to create a .babel rc file. So .babel rc paste that in. We'll also uh, may get some errors later with Babel and we can fix them, but I think this is a pretty solid setup. All right, so thing two to set up is the Apollo server. So my suggestion with this is to use the Apollo server express integration. So this uses the express server underneath the hood. They all have some other integrations as well. Those are all good as well. Um, I would recommend using one of the integrations. We're going to be using the express one. It just gives you more flexibility with the server, I would say. All right, so I am under essentials, building a server, and the hashtag integrations uh, under here. If you want to copy this code or just write it as I paste it in here, this is the getting started of a server. All right, so uh, this is basically, you know, very beginnings of things. Now, I mentioned with Babel, it allows us to do some different syntax. So what that syntax is, is I can say import like this instead of require. I can say import from. All right, so we can do that. Uh, secondly, we need to install the dependencies, so let's do that. We're going to say yarn add Apollo server. We're also going to install Express and GraphQL. And you'll notice we did not install these as dev dependencies. Um, because these are our main core logic, I guess, components. Um, or basically, they're just not development tooling like Babel is. Okay, so 
Here we're creating an instance of Apollo server. We also need to create an instance of Express. So let's do that. I'm going to start by importing it. Import. And I'm going to create an instance of Express called App. Then we're creating an instance of Apollo server. Now we don't really have these type defs and resolvers yet. We're going to add those in a second. Then you'll notice here we are saying server.apply middleware. So what that does is it basically Apollo server adds some middleware to our express server that allows it to handle GraphQL requests. And then we just say here app.listen to start our server up. And then of course we're just console logging. And this is opening on port 4000. So to do GraphQL, there's basically two main things, type definitions, which are called type defs usually. And you'll notice I said GQL here. We I don't think you really even need this right now, but you can import it from Apollo Server Express. And what it allows you to do is inside of here, uh, you notice I did backticks there. So GQL backticks, and inside of this is going to be a string. And these are going to be basically our GraphQL schema. So here is where we're going to define all the GraphQL types. So I'm going to say type query, and we're going to do a very basic one called hello, which is going to return a string. And this exclamation point means it cannot be null. So this is where you're going to put all your information about what your GraphQL schema, what types they return, what operations you support. So in this case, we support a single hello operation that's under, it's a query, and it returns a string. So now we need to figure out how we return the data for this operation. Uh, and that's what our resolvers do. So we say resolvers. And then you're going to notice we're going to pretty much match the nesting here. So we're going to say query, hello. And then we said we have to return a string here. So we're going to say hello. And if we didn't return a string, it would get mad at us. So now let's go ahead and start our, our server. And we can just leave it running now. And you can see it says server ready at uh, this URL. I'm going to copy this. And we can open it. And we can come see our server. Um, I have some old stuff in here, but yours probably looks like this. And if we click on schema, we can see all the things that our GraphQL server supports. So what you're looking at here is called GraphQL Playground. This allows you to basically test out your GraphQL API. So on the right, we can see all the things our schema supports. We can see we have a single query called hello. We can run this by saying hello here and run it. And we can see we got the data back, which is hello. And again, if I were to make a change to this, like hi, save it, you're going to notice this is going to restart, server restarts, and then if I come run this again, it's going to say hi here. Uh, cool. So this is the basic introduction to setting up Apollo server and GraphQL. The last piece is how do we integrate MongoDB with this. So let's copy and paste the just getting started for Mongoose. And let's paste them at the top here. So I'm going to just stop the server real quick and add mongoose. And I'm going to add this import to the top. And I don't know if I mentioned, but Babel is totally optional. You could just use the older syntax if you like. Um, so we're going to keep this connection. Uh, here's where we put the name of our database. So I'm just going to say test like three. I feel like I probably have a database called test already. All right, so we'll save that. So we connect. If I look at this, uh, I just wanted to see if this like returned a promise. Yeah, it does return a promise. It'd probably be good to like wait for this promise to finish before I did anything else. So what I'm going to do um, is... I think what I want to do is split things up into their own files. Right now I have everything in a single index file and I think we can clean this up and make it a lot more easier to grok if we split things up. So I'm going to create a folder called models. Let's spell that correctly. And this is where I might put like my mongoose models. And then I'm going to create a type defs .js. And this is where I'm going to say export const type defs. And we're just going to copy over our code that we used. All right. And let's create a resolvers file. And this should be .js. I'm so used to doing TypeScript that I keep doing .ts. 
and we're just going to export our resolvers. All right. So we don't need them here anymore. And now we can import these. Import. I guess I'm going to have to do it myself. Import from dash resolvers and type defs. The reason I'm doing this is just to simplify what we have here so it's not getting all mangled together. Um, because what I want to do is I want to do a function here just to simplify things. So the other part is moving this kitty model. Sorry, not kitty. It's called cat model. We just created an instance of it here called kitty. So we're going to call it cat.js. We're going to say export const. Or we say array const there. We're going to say export const our model here. Excellent. And then we're going to move this logic to our resolvers to actually create instance of it. We're going to come back to that. So we simplified this file quite a bit. That's what I wanted to do. And the reason why is I want to just create a function called start server. And I'm going to put everything we have here inside of it. All right. And I'm just going to make this async. And the reason why I'm doing this is before we connect or start our server, I want to make sure our connection to MongoDB um, is done with. So to do that, I can say await here, and I can wait for the promise to finish before uh, starting the server up. So we're just going to call start server down here. Um, and I'm just going to say start and see if I introduce any bugs or anything. We Our server didn't change any. We did now just connect to Mongo, but we're not doing anything. We're still just returning high. So how do we integrate in Mongo now? So in our resolvers, we're going to create a new resolver. Say mutation. And this resolver, I want to basically create a cat. So I'm going to say create cat is what I'm going to name it. And actually, usually what I like to do is create the type definition before I create the resolver for it. So let's do that. So this is going to go under mutation because this is creating something in the database. So we're going to say create cat. It's going to take a string as a parameter, which is going to be the name. And it's going to return a cat. So now I'm going to create the type for this cat. It's going to have an ID, which is a string. Actually, when you're using Apollo, it's good to say ID. So this is a special Apollo type. And uh, basically, if you're using Apollo on the front end, it gives you some advantages. Basically, underneath the hood, this is a string. So you can still think of it like that. But that's usually the type I like to give it. All right, so we said ID, give it a name as well. And again, you can add more properties to this. You can create more types, more models. But this is to get started. All right, so let's create our resolver now. So we're going to say create cat. I'm going to make this um, asynchronous. Actually, I don't even think we need to make this asynchronous. I think we can just get the argument. So we want to get whatever name that the person passed in here or to our create cat mutation and create a cat for it. All right, so const cat, I guess we're going to say new. I, we can just copy what we have here, actually. They call it kitty. So we don't care about the first parameter. That's the parent, which we don't really need here. Our second parameter is the arguments. So in this case, we can destructure the name. And that's what we're going to use here. And then we're just going to return kitty.save. Now, let's go ahead and run this. And we're going to notice a error. So if we say mutation, create cat. And to show the error, I'm going to do this. We're going to wait that, we're going to log the kitty, and then we're going to return the kitty. So I want to see if we actually get a cat, and then we're going to look at it. And you just usually need to reload the page to get auto-completion here. So we're going to say name, and I'm going to say this is cat's going to be called Bob. Let's get the ID and the name back. Now, if those of you that are familiar with Mongo, you're probably aware that 
this ID here is usually has an underscore. So if we run this, oh, catch is not defined. I forgot to import our cat. So we created our cat model over here, but I never imported it. So let's do that. Um, import from models slash cat. Mongoose is not defined. Let's go ahead and copy our import and index and paste it at the top of this models file, our cat model file. All right, so our server is back up to running. Go ahead and run it. Wow, it just straight worked. I was really not expecting this to work, but I'm really happy it did. See, so notice how this underscore ID is an object ID. I thought we were going to get an error because of that, but it looks like Apollo actually handles it for us now or something. I'm really surprised that they did. So that's really nice that they added that at some point. Maybe it's because we have this ID here, or maybe Mongoose is doing something. To be honest, I'm not quite sure who handles it, but either way, it worked, so I'm happy. So let's just see what... I don't know what save returns. I think we may be able to simplify this. We can at least simplify it to just that. But either way, that's how we create a cat. I want to just do one last query, which is how to fetch all your cats. So let's add that. I'm going to say cats. It's going to return an array of cats. To say an array in GraphQL, you do brackets around the type. And I'm going to say cat cannot be undefined or null. And the array cannot be undefined either. Okay. Or null. So now we're going to say all cats. Or sorry, just cats. I keep calling all cats. And we're just going to return cat.find. Alright. And you'll notice find if you are familiar with how this works. Uh, I was expecting it to return a promise, but it doesn't look like it may, may not. Either way, GraphQL is going to handle that for us, I believe. So if we refresh this... So we create a bob, we can create a new tab here. Let's see if we can find our bob cat ID name. And let's run that. You can see our cat, we can add another cat. Run this again, and now we have two cats. Awesome. Um, but there you go, this is the basic setup of how I would get started. And uh, this is where you'd go from here. You can add more type definitions, add more to your resolvers. Um, create more models, add more fields, and so on and so forth.